All right. Um, are not individual rights guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution? If not, what? Yeah, you'd think. But they're not explicit enough. They don't define them clearly enough. And the Supreme Court, for 130 years at least, maybe longer, has basically ignored the idea of individual rights, the, the proper idea of individual rights, as defending your freedom of action, defending you as an individual in pursuit of your life as you see fit. And the, the, the Supreme Court has embraced an interpretation of Constitution which embraces the common good, which involves the common good. So that is, that is where we are in terms of the Constitution in many respects is irrelevant because the, the, the Supreme Court refuses to think of the, of the Constitution properly and refuses or can't because it doesn't have the intellectual firepower to actually understand what the founders meant when they talked about individual rights. It's, it's really horrible. Even the best conservative judges are terrible on these issues. It is an outrageous plea to address to human beings anywhere, but the more outrageous here in America, a country based on the principle that man must stand on his own feet, live by his own judgment, and move constantly forward as a productive, creative, innovator. This leads us to the third and the worst argument of some alleged conservatives, the attempt to defend freedom on the ground of man's depravity. This argument runs as follows. Since men are weak, fallible, non-omniscient, and innately depraved, no man may be entrusted with the responsibility of being a dictator and of ruling everybody else. Therefore, a free society is the proper way of life for imperfect creatures. Since men are depraved, they are not good enough for a dictatorship. Freedom is all that they deserve. If they were perfect, they would be worthy of a totalitarian state. Dictatorship, this school asserts, believe it or not, is the result of faith in man and in man's goodness. If people realize that man is depraved by nature, they would not entrust a dictator with power. The belief in human depravity is what would protect their freedom. And more. Dictatorships, this school declares, and all the other disasters of the modern world are man's punishment for the sin of relying on his intellect and of attempting to improve his life on earth by seeking a perfect political system and a rational society. Thus humility, passivity, resignation, and belief in original sin are the bulwarks of capitalism. This is truly the voice of the dark ages rising again in the midst of our industrial civilization.